Let's get over to Spain right now, where banks are using a government loan program designed to help small businesses ravaged by the coronavirus outbreak and shut down to shift risky credit off of their books. Uh, a study found about 37 percent of loans granted under the program to small and medium-sized companies in Catalonia went to paying down old debt, according to a survey by PEMEC, an association that advises on behalf of such businesses in the region. According to the study, most of the country's large banks were following that practice, led by BBVA and Banco de Sabadell. Joining us now is Nadia Calvino, Spain's economy minister. Mrs. Minister, thanks very much for your time. Um, how do you feel this program is working to cushion the blow of the shutdown? Thank you, Matt. Good morning to everyone. Indeed, one of the key measures that we adopted from the beginning of the pandemic was establishing this up to 100 billion uh, public guarantee scheme so that we would uh, ensure that the economy continues to, to run and, and liquidity continues to flow. And uh, actually, we're quite satisfied with the way the program is going. We have activated up to 60, more than 60 billion so far. Uh, the take-up is very good, and our numbers do not reflect this kind of uh, shifting of existing credit. Rather, we see that more than 90% of, of the guarantees are used to issue new credit, particularly to SMEs and self-employed workers. So our assessment is quite positive that we are reaching those that we wanted to fund. That's interesting to hear. Good morning to you, Minister. Let me ask you about the aviation sector. Iberia and Vueling have tapped the government loan program. Um, are, are you planning any other support for the sector, as we've seen from other European governments? Well, as we see every day, the air transport sector is one of the most uh, directly affected by the pandemic and the, and the lockdown measures and, and travel restrictions which have been issued throughout the world. It comes at no surprise that some of the largest airlines will need funding. And we see all the different uh, governments and uh, trying to provide different sorts of support. What we have so far done is issued the public guarantees and, and supported um, different credit lines that were being gathered and, and issued by the banks in Spain. And we will pursue this policy of supporting the airlines so that they can cushion uh, this very hard blow coming from the pandemic. If you're going to take uh, such extreme measures to save airlines, especially maybe some that weren't very well prepared for a crisis to begin with, why don't you take a stake in those airlines? Don't you think the taxpayers deserve a piece of a business if you're going to go in and bail it out? Well, I, two issues. First of all, the airlines were in a different uh, health situation before the crisis broke. Uh, we see that some airlines were already in a tricky financial situation. Other, others had a, a more robust balance sheet, and so they may require different kinds of support. We are strongly supporting that there's a European response. All these large carriers are not of uh, one national or another, they are European carriers. And that's why we're strongly uh, defending that we would provide a level playing field and the different sorts of support uh, provide a similar uh, level of, of um, funding and similar level of credibility and strength to the different operators so that we do not create uh, competition problems at the end of the day. Do you think that some of the support that's been given to other airlines then breaks EU competition rules, Minister? I would like to, to prejudge. There are a number of uh, dealings uh, that are going on and uh, some of the decisions have not been made yet. I think the European Commission is keeping a very close eye to make sure that there is no breach of the competition rules and we do not end up with a very unlevel playing field because of the different capacity of uh, governments to support the different airlines. They're all hit in the same manner. We should provide a European response. Um, we've seen Spain and Italy both hit hard, obviously by this, and, and both countries have wider deficits, greater levels of debt than 
um, than Germany, for example, uh, or, or the Netherlands, which makes it harder for them to confront uh, rebooting their economies. Is, um, is Spain hoping for still a perpetual bond um, set up in order to finance that? Or, or, or are you hoping still for some sort of mutualized debt? Well, there's, these are different issues. First of all, you're right to say that we have been hit more than other countries. We have very open economies, very open societies. We receive every year more than 80 million tourists in Spain. So it comes at no surprise that uh, our societies are some of the most uh, directly hit by the pandemic. Thanks to the very strict lockdown measures we have adopted, we see a clear improvement in the health records, in the health indicators, which shows that we're on the right track. And we hope that the recovery will kickstart in the second part of the year, and that despite the fact that the economy is obviously going to suffer enormously in 2020, we will have a strong rebound in 2021. This is what all forecast uh, institutions, national and international institutions, foresee for Spain in particular. Now, a different issue is the fact that this pandemic is hitting the European economy. All countries are hit, uh, some more than others, but we're all in the same boat. And there again, we defend that there should be a European reconstruction or economic recovery fund which should be funded jointly. We don't think that the outcome to this crisis should be that some countries are even more highly indebted uh, than others. We need to ensure that there's a strong recovery uh, benefiting all citizens in Europe. Uh, as I said a moment ago, we're all in the same boat. We have every interest in all countries coming out of the crisis well, as soon as possible and as strongly as possible. Although, uh, actually, European countries are in different boats. A, in terms of fiscal responsibility, some countries like Germany have just been historically better at dealing with finances than countries like Italy and Spain. I mean, um, you already had a big debt before we came into this. And B, uh, countries like Germany don't have the kind of social safety net. For example, here, uh, when you're out of work, you get paid 65% of your salary, and there I think it's closer to 80%, right? So shouldn't money that essentially uh, Germany is lending to Spain and Italy be uh, attached with some conditions? Well, insofar as the safety net is concerned, I'm afraid that... Germany has a much stronger safety net than we do. Every year we get recommendations from the European Commission, from other international institutions saying we should reinforce our redistributive systems. Uh, unfortunately, they are not the strongest part that we have in our country. But you're right that in the previous years we have made a huge effort to reduce our debt to GDP le levels. Um, I was actually quite satisfied that in the last year we had been able to go down very significantly down to 95.5%. And unfortunately, this year we expect this ratio to go up to around 115%. This is a temporary uh, exception, if you wish, of a downward uh, trend, which I hope we will be able to resume uh, as soon as recovery is stronger. But for the moment, all countries are going to be faced with the same trouble, which is we cannot put health and the economy on different uh, plates. We need to get out of the health crisis as mm. soon as possible if we want the economy to recover as strongly as possible. Minister, and to do that, will you borrow from the ESM? Changes have been made to it to make it more favourable to borrow there uh, during this coronavirus. So will you borrow from the ESM? I think it's very good that we have been able to reach an agreement on three different funding tools, which are based on loans. These are not grants or transfers. These are loans to the countries. One is the ESM, as you pointed out, a pandemic precautionary line. Secondly, the a new instrument called SURE that would reinforce short-term work screen, schemes like the ones that we have enacted in, in Spain in particular. And thirdly, the EIB to provide uh, common guarantees. We're strongly supporting these three instruments. We think it's good that all member states could have access to additional funding sources. But for the moment, uh, our funding conditions are very, very favorable. 
uh, in the last auctions we have done, our T bills, 12-month 12, 12 T bills have gone into the negative area again. We have been able to get very good conditions and therefore we do not have any problem with tapping financial markets. Still, I think it's good that there's a safety net for citizens, for companies and for governments at the European level, which uh, provides an additional reinforcement element for us to face this pandemic.